All right, so how y'all doing boys? Hope you're doing well, Nate, in today's video. Of course, back with another Bloody Elizabeth showcase and using her with what are probably some of my favorite units in the game. That is, of course, the Jack of Black Gotha and Blue True Seeker Merlin. Unfortunately, I haven't had enough time to get the True Seeker Merlin leveled up to 100, but in saying that, I feel like she is mostly a utility character. Granted, while we're using the HP defense set on her, so she doesn't really need the level 100 as much as some other characters might do. So, I mean, that's kind of my excuse to get out of doing that one. But if you guys don't know what the Bloody Elizabeth does, her first card here inflicts flood damage equal to 500% of attack on one enemy. Enemy. Her second card inflicts damage equal to 275% of attack on all enemies, then deals additional damage equal to 8% of max HP for every orb in the hero's ultimate move gauge. Her ultimate inflicts damage equal to 42% of the hero's max HP on all enemies, then applies resurrection on all allies for one turn. And then her passive for every hero, uh, every time one hero of the applicable allies uses skills, increases their basic stats by 4%, stacking up to 6 times. At max stats, uh, applicable allies recovers 30% of max HP, then increase all heroes' stats by 15% for 5 turns. So, we are using, of course, the attack crit set. I would use her on HP defense, but I just feel like giving her that extra damage definitely does help, and I am a person who really likes Bunga Bunga big damage. And then, jumping over to the closet here, she is completely maxed out. Don't know if I'll ever end up getting these, in saying that I'm not the biggest fan. I still feel like just her regular UR costume is way better than all of these other ones. However, I definitely do agree that she will get a another costume sometime within the next month or so so this is the team using today and let's jump right into it here we go our first opponent and quite a scary team to come up against the sorry elizabeth combo can be terrifying especially costs they can get that turn one proc of the full is passive let's see we're going to go for the attack disable combining that with the jack of black earth card stops the margaret from using the breath of bless as well so i think the only thing you'll be able to do in this next turn is use the sorry ultimate so we should be fine in that regard we can continue attacking in as much as possible and getting up our own liz passive and we'll just look at that in another two uh merlin cards we do have the block effect on us which is all right we can still get the passive effect which is the main reason why we're using her the dissolve and the flood effect we don't really need a crazy amount Taunt up there, so he's going to be on four stacks by the end of this turn. We are going to take a lot of damage on Merlin, actually. Uh, we still, I think we still just go for it. And then chuck out the Gotha card as well. As long as Merlin survives through this turn, it is only a level one counter, so I feel like we should be good. Yeah, no, that's all right. We should get pretty much all of our health back from the Elizabeth passive after this final attack. I really like to merge the Gotha cards, but using Elizabeth, you're kind of forced not to merge cards. It's... Really annoying. I think I might actually start moving Elizabeth towards the back. I know I usually use her towards the front that way. You know, we can kind of use cards and hers can merge together by the time we get to that third turn. I don't know. I really would like to actually start getting some of the level two Jack of Black cards. They do end up being a massive help in these matchups. Yeah, we have a crazy amount of debuffs on us as well. Not having access to any cleanse. If they would just make a cleanse part of the Elizabeth passive once she gets that six procs, that would be insanely helpful. But what can you do? Hmm... Let's see, we go to our Elizabeth here. Don't know why I was checking the Sariel. Okay, so yeah, we're maxed out there. Can we kill is the question. Do I go for this? I think this is our best bet for getting as much damage out as possible. No max proc on Gotha as well, so we're missing out on the 25% attack related stats. With all those debuffs on us as well, even if we crit, which is very unlikely. Yeah, not doing anywhere near enough damage. I should have gone for the Pulverize card and done the safe bet. In saying that, I would have had to have moved it as well. Kind of just have to pray Margaret has low ult level. Uh, Melon's ultimate is good, granted I only have a 2-6. She's one of the only characters that I have that low. She comes around a lot of banners. She was actually on the third year banner as well, but I mean there's like, what, 25 units on that banner? It's so hard to actually get what you want. Yeah, absolutely blitzing Merlin there. Mm, got the merge on Elizabeth, which gives us the ultimate, but we are... Uh, we're still in a really bad spot regardless of having the ultimate. Because, yeah, that block effect will actually remove the revive on her ultimate. Does she have any other effects other than the revive? No, it's just a resurrection. I'm really torn up on whether or not I still want to go for it. How about... Oh, the block effect is going to remove our Jack of Blood as well. Man, Margaret's effect is so powerful. Let's, let's just still go full send on Margaret. Get the full passive. We haven't got Dissolve on us, which, I mean, even if we did, we still get to keep the grave off. Literally just doing this to get as much as go through as well. We probably could have merged cards since we've already maxed out a passive, but that's all right. Man, what a tough matchup to start off the video. See, we have the attack buff there. Still can't cleanse that block effect. Is that... Okay, so that's only for one more time we have to deal with that. 
Do we just go ahead and... Oh damn, Gareth is dead anyways. Ouch, what a, what a hard matchup, as if we just got stomped right out of the game. But I'm absolutely sure we'll win this one, especially if we do end up getting the ICC. Teams Luda are pretty much useless, especially in today's day and age, and having true Seeker Mullet, this is the greatest part and why I pretty much every time use her just absolutely love the unit, is teams like this, there is literally nothing your opponent can do. As long as we get another Merlin card this next turn, once again, they can't do anything for the entire turn. Um, granted they, yeah, okay, they do have the Infect card which they can throw out, but once again, we're pretty much at full HP, so it's not like we're going to be recovering back a crazy amount of health anyways. This is a very, very strong team, especially if you end up getting the at CC. I'd probably even end up using the Rimuru and HP defense, just for that extra CC, also love the visual bug. Um, you know, using them on HP defense, Luda obviously on HP defense, and then probably having the uh, Meliodas on the attack crit is probably best bet. And then when it comes to units in the back, the Ragnarok Farm would probably be your best bet, once again on HP defense. Here we go, another attack disable. Jumping out the Jack Black card, we didn't really need it. I kind of just threw it out because we'd rather use that than the Polarized card. Get the extra ult gauge. And yeah, at this point we have won the match. I might see if I can just go full send on the AoE cards and just get the wipe there. Can we do it? I, I'm surely right. I might actually have a quick look at her stats, see what her HP is looking like. Just shy of 400,000. Actually, this one doesn't scale off. Yeah, it doesn't scale off HP. That's alright though, we should still do a crazy amount of damage. Especially when she crits, that multiplier on the crit is so ridiculous. What was I thinking as well, not killing with a full hand of AoE cards? Man, she is so impressive. And it's so surreal that Elizabeth can look this impressive without actually having a full proper team. Man, that is a lot of CC. We're probably gonna get some level 90 Kyo as well. Man, surely he doesn't have like a HP defense melee, but I say she doesn't have a team, and of course you could say she has the Red Tommy or Margaret team, which she just synergized very well. I feel like giving her a proper support, maybe whenever we get a Tarmiel would be a really good idea. He could be in a crazy frontline support for this Elizabeth. And then we are also missing a backline Archangel support. I know you can kind of use your typical supports, you can use your Barn, you can use your Fesecutioner Zeldris. I don't know, we're missing an actual support for the Archangels and if we end up getting Mael after all this time and it ends up being a backline unit, I'm going to be so insanely disappointed. It's going to be ridiculous. Um. I honestly don't think there's much chance we have of winning this match and I finished my rant so let's go on to the next one. Honestly not looking too good at the start of this one, already lost two matches, this one should be good though, this is still a very strong team. I do believe I still have yet to use Elizabeth with Deanne as well which is a very strong combo. Let's go full send on the Deanne to try and get as much HP down before she ends up getting built up. I would say, oh look, we probably made it Um, yeah I would still say Deanne is crazy good, I feel like Deanne is very very underrated. I'd say she's definitely top 5 characters in the game. If you end up getting a build up in PvP, she can look way, way stronger than Trader Meliodas does because she has that tanking ability. Granted, Trader Meliodas does a crazy amount for the team as well, giving out those extra damage reduction buffs. I don't know, she is so, so crazy underrated. You get a 6-6 as well. She also gets so much more viable. Actually, having that ultimate does do does do having the ultimate doing damage is very very good because I mean I have a 3-6 at the moment and it just doesn't hold up, that's for sure. Once again, the visual glitch on Rimuru. I'd really like to see that one fixed, hopefully, in the next update. It's still on the JP version, so fingers crossed. Uh, let's go for another attack disable and then another pulverize card. Please give us the merger on that Elizabeth. That way, we can just one tap this DN because she has a lot of health that we're going to have to get through. Having Melon HP defense as well doesn't help out. She has a really good ultimate. It's just, yeah, the flood card. The flood card is very good. I mean, Elizabeth has the flood card, and Eskinor, although. He has the flood, although he doesn't do a crazy amount anymore in PvP, it's mainly because he can't crit, he still has the flood card and in PvE content it is absolutely ridiculous. I feel like Escanor is one unit that has fallen off so, so much in PvP and I mean quite a few people don't see it. I still see so many people actually using them still. Uh, let's go mm, one, two, and three. This just maximizes a lot of card draw. I feel like we're probably wasting that second single target on DN. Red Tarmio Grace? Mm. That's alright, we should still get the kill here. I mean, I'd hope so at least. AoE come through. No way does Dean actually survive that. This is what I mean. And she's built up to the point now where she can just start destroying any of our units. We have the block effect on Elizabeth, which is definitely why I didn't do any of my damage. Uh, not having a cleanse as well is such a pain. That's why using Margaret is just so good at this point. The Holy Relic also building her up. When you use the buff cards, it also helps build up her passive. And then Red Tarmiel, the Holy Relic is one of the reasons why Red Tarmiel is so good. Without a Holy Relic, he is nothing compared to what he is now. 
removes the ultimate. We start the block effect anyways. Starting to go ham on our Elizabeth. Mm. How many old gauge are we off Goth off? Two. Definitely makes things difficult. Uh we don't have three Merlin cards, otherwise we could have gotten the ultimate seal. Let's go. Do I want to go for this first? I think I might go for this first. I think this will just have to get through DN. <laughs> oh no. Let's just go for this. Why not? I honestly don't think we have any chance of winning this match, so. Wow, we are doing absolutely terrible. This is it's such a strong team as well, but we are just getting super unlucky with the matchups. Yeah, look at Deanne. Look at Deanne go, man. I'd love to have more ult levels in my Tamiya to make him an actual viable support. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Getting through Deanne, but at this point, the rumor has got ultimate, and anything above, like, 3-6, I feel, will just end up dying right out the gate. Finally don't have that block effect on our Elizabeth, so should be able to deal some damage with her now. At this point as well, Shuna's in the front, so it's not like we can constantly spam our attack disable and get away with it, unless we do, of course, play other debuffs, but don't have any Jack of Light cards in our hand. Melly going for the AoE. Elizabeth definitely dead here. I feel like True Seeker is as well, depending on the ult level. Jack of Light Goth is pretty squishy. Costume is not it though. So yeah, Jack of Light Goth survives. Ugh, First Execution of Zell just coming to the front. I just don't think we have... Oh, I completely forgot about the Abyss effect. And that just goes to show why Demon Lord Rumor is the best character in the game. Another really scary matchup, however. We do have so much CC on them. I feel like we'll be alright. Let's go... If we use the Jack of Light, do we end up cleansing, or should I say, do we end up disabling the heal card? Because that'd be ideal for us. That way they can't get the cleanse off. Don't know, did I not target Rumor? I swear I did. That's right, surely we get the... This still all, okay. Mm -hmm. I feel like using Elizabeth cards in this next turn before we actually get the buff might be our best bet. Going for the Infect and Dissolve as well. As long as we're not getting attack disabled, we should be fine. I don't know, I feel like we really need more units in the game that actually have this cleanse effect. I feel like my favourite team for Elizabeth might be what we're using now, but replacing the True Seeker Merlin with the Margaret. Mm, a lot of Pierce on Rimuru there. Not really a fan. Let's go for this. Use the AoE first, that way we get the extra 6%, I think it is, from a passive. You'll see the second one does a little bit more. Uh... This single target definitely isn't going to kill. Because, yeah, she would just be so much stronger if we ended up getting the passive prop before that final card. Got quite a few Gotha cards. Uh, still not in a great situation. What's the Rimuru going to go for? Getting rid of True Seeker. Okay, I'm fine with that, actually. You can completely get rid of them. That just removes that extra card from us. Oh, please don't just attack. Disable, though. Okay, um, let's get to killing before we end up losing ourselves. Why would you- did he not see the Ludo Grace? Surely not, right? Or maybe it's just the bot and I'm still getting absolutely pummeled. Come on, Elizabeth, please kill Rimuru here. Okay, thank god, holy. Who's gonna be the backline here? I'm guessing it's gonna be a Ram. Yeah. Okay, we have the Revive Ultimate. Uh, stun could be an issue, but they just use their stun. I doubt they're gonna have three Merlin cards, so fortunately we won this one, however, the CC difference was so insane that I mean it should have been a free win anyways. God damn. Two Seeker Merlin dead there. And the final card. Oh, this could not be going worse. Oh, is it not an ultimate seal? Oh sweet, we still we still win here. Unfortunately we can't max out the go of the passive beforehand to get that extra damage, but let's go you. And then you please just end up killing here, Elizabeth. That'd be that'd be great of you. We'll get the revive anyways, so not like the Merlin can kill us. Eight hundred thousand is pretty good. And final opponent take two. What is this? Is this a Halloween Slater or is this an OG Red Slater with Ludo Grace? This is wacky, and I absolutely love it. <laughs> okay, this is OG Red Slater. I. Man, that is really good card draw on Gotha. If we can get a another Polarized card, we can max out the passive before we get the Elizabeth passive as well. And just on the well, not last match because I had the forfeit, but on the match previously, we got the max Gotha passive, or we propped the Holy Relic, should I say? And used a level one Elizabeth card and did what, like three hundred thousand. So we're relying so much on that. It's only twenty five percent, but it helps out the team so much. She just 
I feel like she needs even more support than what her passive has to be used by herself. And this is where my whole thing's going, where we need a frontline Tarmiel that's able to support this unit to make her good. Oh, well, she is already good, but to make her the best unit in the game. She's the third anniversary. In fact, she should be the best unit in the game. That's all right, though. Uh, let's see. Let's start dealing damage into you. We'll still get the Holy Relic buff there, so we should be fine. Please do some damage as well. Eh, it could have been better. Holy Relic actually procs before final card. And then look at that, yeah. 200,000 damage instantly wiping True Sick amount. We get our heal and we're, we're looking good for this match. Mm, level 100 True, uh, True Sick Lilia? Awakened Lilia. Honestly, two single targets from her. And I feel like any of our units are dead. Let's see, the Slater on the front guaranteeing them crits, I could imagine. Going for Slater single targets. That's alright, we'll, we'll throw off these Merlin cards. Still not critting, okay. But yeah, we'll throw off these cards and then we'll wrap up the video. I'm, I'm happy with how the team's done. Granted, once again, we did not show off the team at its best. I feel like some bad type matchups not being able to proc the Holy Relic as much as we wanted to and a whole bunch of other factors. But, I mean, look, she is super impressive. We're just... It just didn't work today. And there we go. That just about does it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. I mean, I absolutely love all of these units. I just don't feel like True Seeker actually fits on this team. I feel like she ends up doing a whole lot better with Demon Lord Rimuru and Trader Meliodas. Maybe they're just not meant to be. But once again, that just about does it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please hit the like button, subscribe. It really means a lot to me. And I'll see you guys for some more Grand Cross content.